Estou toma, mas como estou toma? Ei, <risos> hey, welcome back to Scooptober. Everyone's been asking and asking for Scooby Doo and the Goblin King, especially for Halloween. And who am I to deny wishes during my favorite season? The Goblin King is here. Scooby Doo and the Goblin King. Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> I've already covered the first three movies of the What's New Era, and everyone is asking for the rest after the last one, so I think it's safe to say I will be doing the rest eventually. You don't have to keep asking for them, they are coming for sure. Not all in a row though, because these take a lot of time and energy and I don't want to clog up things with just movie videos. I need to do other stuff, you know? I was gonna do them in order, but everyone really wanted this one for Halloween, so I guess I'll bump it up. Let's keep things honest. I said before that I wasn't a big fan of this one growing up. It honestly bored me so much I stopped really caring about the movies for a minute back then. But I know people love it, it's got a loud fan base that has made itself heard so I am open to being swayed to the other side by the end of this video. I'm not a child that hates fantasy movies anymore. I'm a grown adult that hates fantasy movies. Normally I would do a fun segment after the movie on all the classic bonus features on the DVD, but by this point they stopped doing anything of value, so we have to lose that segment, sadly. We'll have to find other ways to have fun without that, so let's get into it. Released in September of 2008, Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King is the 12th directed video movie and the 6th of the What's New era. It was the first one to be produced without either William Hanna or Joseph Barbera being involved following Barbera's passing in 2006. Like many of the other movies, this one has a stacked voice cast. Like, seriously, for real, stacked. It's ridiculous. Aloha is embarrassed in front of this one. Hayden Pantier voices Fairy Princess Willow. I know her best for her role as Kirby in the Scream franchise, but she's got a huge list of credits you'll recognize. Wayne Knight voices the amazing Krudski. You'll definitely recognize his voice from other roles, like Tantor in Tarzan, Big Al in Toy Story 2 and Emperor Zurg and Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, or live action roles like Newman on Seinfeld among a million other roles. While the Sean voices Mr. Gibbles, you might know his voice as Rex from Toy Story, the principal in a goofy movie, Principal Strickler in Teacher's Pet, etc, 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 or his countless live action appearances, like The Haunted Mansion. Jay Leno, yes, him, voices Jack o Lantern. The late great Lord McCall voices the Grand Witch. You might know her as the voice of another iconic witch, the Witch of the Waste in my favorite movie Howl's Moving Castle. What a tacky song. I've never seen such tacky hats. Yet you're by far the tackiest thing here. Her iconic career in Hollywood spans seven decades, so I'll make everyone angry and leave it at that. Tom Adcox voices Sparkplug. If you're me, you'll know his voice as Clary in The Witch Boy in Young Justice. Come on, Tico, let's boogie. Being trapped in this tower is worse than being trapped in a big yellow pogo stick. Meow. Bus! Bus! You knew I meant bus! Or you'll probably also know his voice from other Greg Weissman shows, like Lexington and Gargoyles, or Tinkerer in Spectacular Spider-Man. Double, double, toil and trouble. Someone's got to room me a bubble. Rusty Taylor voices both the Owl Witch and the Fairy Tiddlywink. You'll definitely know her as the voice of Minnie Mouse for Disney up until her death in 2019, which Tiddlywink definitely sounds like. The castle will be crawling with guards for the Goblin's Rave. As well as Cinderella's fairy godmother and Drizella in all related things, and Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby in the original DuckTales. She was also in 193 episodes of The Simpsons as characters like Martin, and Scooby-Doo fans will for sure recognize her as Phantasma in Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. Oh my, <laughs> oh my God. I think that's the end of the cast, right? Nobody else? Okay, fine. The voice of the titular Goblin King himself is none other than the legendary Tim Curry, returning to the franchise after voicing Ben Ravencroft in the iconic Witch's Ghost. I definitely don't need to continue, you know who he is, be it Rocky Horror, Muppet Treasure Island, Clue, Hit, you know who he is. And he is definitely the reason to get excited for revisiting this movie. He even has a second role as the werewolf. That actually does do it for the cast, but holy shit, how many stars did they even fit in here? What the hell was the budget for this movie? This one very much harkens back to the TV movies of the 80s, so Boo Bro Brothers, School School, Reluctant Werewolf, all movies where the monsters are real and it's a Scooby and Shaggy solo adventure plus Scrappy. This is also a movie where, spoilers, the magic and monsters are real and turns into a solo movie with the boys. I love those TV movies myself, but I know people get tired of Shaggy and Scooby when they're on their own sometimes, so that might have had something to do with how I felt about it as a kid. Let's actually watch this thing and see how well they utilize all of this. The movie begins with the always scary fright of early 2000 CG, and this time the gang is riding in on it. The credits are actually really cool as Scooby howls and the gang are terrified riding the coaster, with great touches like passing the Phantom of the Opera as the music composer is credited. Also really cool is having animated versions of the unit directors pop out of their graves. That's a really neat touch. The terrifying CG coaster comes in and Daphne is ready to go again, though Velma definitely is not down. For once, the boys weren't scared and had a great time, so the gang try to get them to admit their fear of the monsters, but they point out there's nothing to fear knowing they're fake, especially on Halloween night when everything is fake.
The gang see posters for the Amazing Krusty show so they get tickets and... Oh god, what in the holy hell? And now Scooby's jumping in. That is not sanitary. Krusty isn't happy either, all wet and smelly now. Acting pretentious about them calling his show an act, he tells them dogs aren't allowed. So Shaggy and Scooby come up with a plan. Krusty addresses the people of Coolsville as the show begins. Pony summons magic from his hat, he gets Scooby instead. He and Shaggy reveal the hole in the table, exposing the fake magic. Happy to rub it in, they expose the trap door he used to appear, announcing how phony he is as the audience boos and walks out. I'll get you for this. And you big dog, too! What is with the random Oz references in these movies? Monster Mexico had some, two of you have seen that video. The rest of the gang are upset, the boys for getting them kicked out of the carnival. But the boys still haven't reached their favorite part of the night, as we get a montage of them trick-or-treating around. The rest of the gang have their fill and wish the boys luck. And we move on to see a sparkling light fly across the sky into the carnival. The light turns into a fairy who spies on Kresge bemoaning the night he's just had. Conveniently explaining to himself that he's searched for years for real magic and tried every spell possible to no avail. The fairy slips and pushes over a book by accident, which opens to a page with the golden scepter, Wand of the Goblin King, which gives Kretzky an idea. He declares the scepter will be his by the end of the night as he congratulates himself in the mirror, the fairy remaining unimpressed as she uses magic to fly him into a trunk. He pops out, angrily demanding whomstever is responsible to come out as the fairy flies around, leading him to get a fly swatter out. The fairy basically just starts messing with him for a while, I kinda got bored, but she gets distracted and runs into the wall, knocking herself out. He swats her and is shocked when he realizes what he's found. Uh, fable, fawn, fang face. <laughs> Yes, fairy. In his book, he finds a mortal can steal a fairy's magic with a spell on Halloween. And he does it, which of course can only mean good things. Meanwhile, the boys are at the last house, which doubles as the storefront of Mr. Gibble's genuine magic shop. Shaggy is less afraid knowing magic isn't real, though the gates and door open on their own as if to welcome them in. A little more apprehensive, they pop in and try things out. Scooby messes around with a mirror, but it ends up having a life of its own, though Shaggy mocks him for being scared. Mr. Gibbles finally appears, ready to sell to them, but they reveal their trick-or-treaters, so he chooses Trick. And what a trick, because he actually starts singing a song, and perhaps the well as Sean for actually doing the singing. That's scary! Don't you vote, there's still hope, take it from me. You can have protection for a nominal fee. It's pretty fun, yeah. The Merry Mentis Gambin, though, was a knock breaks through, being the fairy princess Willow. She came to warn Mr. Gibbles that her power was stolen and to close up shop fast, which he believes to just be a prank as she hides in the CG clock. The confused boys try to back up, but the doors slam open as Kretzky appears. Using the magic mirror, he locates Willow and takes her, though Mr. Gibbles tries to stop him. Kretzky transforms him into a rabbit to be rid of him, and he flies away with tons of new toys, leaving the boys behind. Buddy Gibbles tells them they can still save Willow and Halloween, pulling out a crystal ball to see the future where the rest of the gang are targeted by Kretzky and turns into real monsters, Velma a werewolf, Fred a vampire, and Daphne a witch, exactly like the cutouts they posed in at the start. Kind of badass, honestly. Like the future? As in stuff that hasn't happened yet and therefore might be changed if we embark on a perilous quest to alter the hand of destiny? Like that kind of future? Something like that, yes. Mr. Gibbles confirms and finds a book to show them the scepter, saying Kretzky has the light magic and only needs the dark to complete his power. He expands, revealing the powers of Halloween would rule forever as everyone would turn into monsters like the gang did in the future vision. The boys are told they must travel to the land of the Halloween spirits and find the Goblin King's castle, find the scepter, and get back before midnight, which sounds super duper easy. The boys are kind of over Halloween now, though. Before they depart, Gibbles hands them a deck of magic cards, each of which can help them in some way, such as the first, which gives them temporary monster disguises to blend in. He wants them to be careful, though, only to use them for emergencies as they can only be used once, each with a quick expiration. The early 2000s CG train flies out of the ground, clunkily landing, and it really doesn't look good. Sorry to that one guy. We just keep panning angles, and they are angles I do not want to see. The boys are dragged on, and Gibbles gives them the final warning to return by sunrise or be trapped forever. Pretty important. Unfortunately, he didn't think of how they'd get back, so I guess they're on their own. The clunky CG kicks in and flies into the sky this time, and the boys realize they're surrounded by real ghosts. They stop the train, which falls to the ground as they run out to kiss it, and man walks up, accusing them of trying to sneak into his boneyard as the disguises expire, and under the full moon, he reveals his own true form, a werewolf. I'm about to do it again, and I'm sorry because it's on the furry ledge this time, but bro is hot as both a human and a wolf man. I'm sorry, it had to be said. He's got the beef. Maybe it's that he's also voiced by Tim Curry. Time for a late night snack. Who can resist a Tim Curry werewolf? Come on. Scooby sneaks into Shaggy's shirt, and they convince him they're also a werewolf. Thoroughly impressed, he allows them inside. Sorry about the rough reception, mate. 
Gotta keep out the riffraff now, don't I? <laughs> oh my god, Tim Curry Werewolf, please fight me already. When the boys get up, they find themselves in a bar made of corpse pride, full of all kinds of spooks and monsters. You'll find a phantom shadow, the werewolf, the creeper, Mr. Hyde, and a ton of others, including some that people swear are totally here, but I can't find for the life of me. I feel like I'm being gaslit. The boys try making field small talk before the corpse pride vibes really kick in, with the piano playing skeleton singing another song in this unlikely musical, until the boys ask for the Goblin King and ruin it. The Goblin Patrol show up due to them saying his name, and they try to sneak away, but as they're about to be taken away, Jack-o'-lantern appears to threaten the guards. Getting rid of them, Jack helps lead the boys out back into the graveyard, but he has things to do himself with his burning candle determining the only remaining time he has left. They hear a horse in the distance, and in rides the Headless Horseman himself, who Jack asks them to hide him from, so the chase begins. Scooby tries to card Shield of Safety, but even the shield runs away terrified. Scooby nearly loses his head as Shaggy pulls the Wall of Gnome card, Force of Flowers, Clown Calamity, Baby on a Frog, all ineffective as he trips and loses the rest. The horseman catches Jack and makes him his head, now coming for Shaggy even harder. Scooby Tarzan yells himself down to rescue Jack, who falls to Shaggy while Scoob falls into the horseman. Somehow, they cross the covered bridge where he can't follow, and they finally relax. Back home, the gang are looking for them when they notice the light coming from the big top and investigate. Inside, Kretzky is contacting the Goblin King through the mirror, who is unimpressed until he sees Willow. The gang, of course, sees her too. But that's impossible. Rational mind. Shutting down. Ooh. Kretzky offers GK a trait of Willow for his scepter at midnight, and GK is not happy. The gang now realize they have to do something to help. Right, Velma? <laughs> Well, Fred and Daphne have to. Elsewhere, Jack gets the boys somewhere that might help them before saying goodbye finally. We end up with a really sweet, sincere moment with the boys in the aftermath before they head up. Hmm. Inside, they find a witch around a cauldron, forcing them to enter. She tries some of her brew on them, making them a snail and a mouse, before the owl transforms herself into a witch and fixes them back. The cat transforms into a witch as well, excited to have them for dinner. The ladies reveal they can guide them to GK's castle, but only if they help them first. You see, the call witch had to cancel her midnight ride, and her broomstick is depressed, so she wants the boys to use it so it still gets to have its night out. You'll need this to get inside the castle. It's magic potion. My own secret recipe, made from scratch. Poor old Scratch. People say these three are very Hocus Pocus inspired, but personally, I also get more Black Cauldron. Anyway, the boys now have the room as a guide, and they fly off in a really cool looking sequence. They even start to get the hang of it and have a good time. Unfortunately, the little goblin guards have eyes on them with intent to blast them down as the boys are hit and crash. When they wake up, they find themselves in the city of fairies who fixed Broomy for them. They give them advice on how to get into GK's party, taking them to the graveyard entrance. Honestly, the fairies here are giving me Black Cauldron vibes too. This is a very Black Cauldron movie. Has anyone ever noticed that? I mean, the main villain there is even the Horned King. I feel like we should be making more comparisons to that movie than some of the others I see. That's my hot take of the video. Go watch Breadsword's video on why that's a Halloween masterpiece. Scooby summons the elevator down, and they slide through until they finally see the castle. Observing the long line, they take the potion they were given where they transform into Daphne and Velma, just like in Pirates Ahoy. I don't know why they need a potion to cosplay or how a potion would do that, but sure, it's enough to get the guards all bricked up and Shaggy flirts his way around them. It's honestly a really funny scene, I had a great time. <laughs> Inside, things are looking like Maleficent's fire pit where the ghouls finally find GK and his scepter, and they realize they only have five minutes until the midnight deadline. Before they can act, the guards show up to take them for a dance, and we get another song, this time from the goblins, where Scooby maybe gets a little too into it. As time is running out, Scoop reaches over to get the scepter, but his disguise falls off, so he just grabs it, makes up with GK real quick, and gets back to Shaggy to escape. GK stops them and takes his scepter back as the clock strikes 12, with him sending all the goblins out to commit mischief. He appears in the mortal realm for his meeting with Kretzky for the trade as Fred and Daphne look on. As it begins, they set off their CG trap and save Willow, but Kretzky still gets the scepter and becomes a goblin himself, turning GK into a goose. Outside, the goblins are on the loose, while Scooby and Shaggy find themselves in the castle dungeon. Black cauldron vibes! Shaggy reminisces about how brave they were able to be until now, wishing they had just one more chance, just in time for the fairies to arrive and free them, and Broomy greets them outside. Jack rejoins them as they fly out, while Kretzky takes command as the new Goblin King. Despite Shaggy and Scooby for earlier, he turns the mystery machine into the monstrous machine, upsetting Fred, and it chases them around the carnival. For some weird implications, Scrappy appears as some plush toys at one of the booths here. They end up trapped on the Ferris wheel as they truly become scared, and I who can blame them? Uh, very scary, they're up that high, yeah. Oh, Scooby! 
Scrappy do? Where are you? In his ultimate act of revenge, Kresge hits them with the magic and makes the Crystal Ball's prediction come true as they become monsters. Still kind of badass. Kresge boasts, but the boys ride in to try and save the day and manage to get him to drop the scepter for Scooby to grab it. But they get the unwanted side effect of Goblin Scoob. Honestly, by this point in the movie, I'm starting to get a little tired again. It just keeps dragging on. I don't think my opinion is changing much. Anyway, Scooby turns Kresge back to normal and fixes the rest of the gang and Mr. Gibble's back too. Thelma then finds Willow safe, free from the spell finally. Oh, GG. K, unfortunately, is also free though, summoning his scepter back and returning Scooby to his natural state. GK chastises Willow, and we find out he's so displeased because she's his daughter. Somehow. Is she half goblin? Uh, adopted? They don't get into it. He grounds her and they have a happy reunion anyway. Kretzky isn't getting off so easy, told he's being taken back with him, and GK sends all the goblins back home. Willow finds poor Jack burn up for the year, and Mr. Gibble says his goodbyes with Broomy. GK lights a new candle for Jack, and the three of them go home themselves, along with Willow. GK promises they will be remembered, but that everyone else must forget. Casting a spell as he and Kretzky return, closing the portal. As the sun comes up, the gang wake up and find the boys waiting for them in the van. They ask where they've been, and Shaggy says they'd never believe them. The carnival comes down, and Daffy wonders if they're a little old for this by now, which Velma says might be true of believing in monsters. Shaggy asks what the difference is when you never know where your next scare will come from, so long as you're brave enough to face it. Of course, when the horseman appears in the mirror, all that bravado is lost. No, it's just Scooby messing with him. Scooby dooby doo! And that's the movie! I know it's a Halloween favorite for many, so hopefully we all had a good time. I went in prepared to have my own perspective changed on it and see the light, but the amount of times I became bored or disinterested still like when I was a kid were too many. I definitely can't say this is one of my favorites myself, unfortunately. Not that it's bad, not by any means. The animation is great and I can't find any flaws that really stick out there, outside of some clipping in the CG sometimes and just the CG in general, but we all know my few with that by now. The voice acting from the stars is amazing, and of course it is with a cast like this. My only shoot there would be with Casey Kasem and Shaggy. Like I mentioned in my Monster Mech Mexico video. He was much older by this point, this being the penultimate time he would voice the character before he retired from it, and you can hear it in his voice. Compare how he sounded in the OG series to this performance and it's pretty rough. And of course it is, the man's had an amazing career for decades and he's got most of the lines this time since it's a Shaggy and Scooby solo led film, so the stray is much harsher. It's a bit distracting for me occasionally, but Kasem as Shaggy is something you can never go wrong with, so it's not something I would ever change. I guess I'd say Tim Curry as the Goblin King kind of actually doesn't leave much of an impression on me for once, but he's still great. The music of course is fantastic. As you would want in a pseudo musical, and even the music score had me impressed at times. I don't know what I would do with the story or direction to keep me from constantly falling out of attention with this one, but I guess it's just one not for me. Different people like different things. And I know it's not just because I'm too old, because I had the same reaction as a kid when I was the target demo. Probably just too much fantasy element. A problem that does plague Black Cauldron for me as well. And this being Scooby Doo's Black Cauldron is still my hot take. I guess the pacing also feels pretty slow when it's just Shaggy and Scooby. I know this also might be a hot take, but that worked in the three TV movies in the 80s because they had Scrappy. And and of course, the other fantastic one-off additions each of those had. But here, the boys are just working off each other in a revolving line of celebrity voices for just way too long, and the direction and script fails to capture my interest. Personally, the Headless Horseman is one of my favorite fictional characters, so I always love seeing him. I can't get enough of Sleepy Hollow. I just wish he had more to do too. That's just me though. Sometimes it's a fun movie with a great Halloween spirit, and sometimes it drags. I know there's a ton of you that love this one though, so let me know why you do love it. We can all talk about why we do or don't and get to the bottom of that together. The next DTV movie after after Scooptober is over that I'll be doing will be Pirates Ahoy, and then going in order from there, hopefully November for that one, but we'll see. Scooptober is not over yet though, there's plenty more fun to be had, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out, and like the video because seriously the algorithm kind of super duper genuinely hates me lately for some reason. You can follow me on socials for updates and whatnot if you want, I think that's it for this one, bye! It's time for the comment of the week! Entitled Industries writes, and that was more an insult than a compliment to be honest. Literally nobody doesn't get a billion worthless comments on anything they put out on the internet. Clowning on them is beyond overdone and just cringe at this point. I don't find your dozen mentions of them entertaining or funny, just distracting. If Depressive Spiral is even anywhere on the radar as a response to somebody not liking your YouTube vids, probably better for you to avoid the internet. Thank you for your contribution to the community! Hope to see you again!